Hey, it's Chad with Drive the Lightning, the positively charged EV channel. We have a special guest, Bob Vogel from New Mobility Magazine, which you can find at newmobility.com. He's here to talk about his impressions of the Aptera that he saw in San Francisco. Bob, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks. It's, it's great to be here. Um, love your channel, and this is exciting. What was it like as you were coming up and seeing the crowd in the car? What was the atmosphere like, and what was your takeaway? Well, first of all, it was... It was really cool. I love the way they set it up and everything. Um, my wife and I, uh, we, the, the, the tickets that we drew were for 6.30 in the evening. So wow. we figured out oh, we'd make a day of it, drive down, and we went down the coast. Um, it turned out accidentally that went perfect because I saw some of the video from earlier in the day. And uh, as one would expect, uh, I think there was, what, a thousand people there or something. And even when we showed up at 6.00, we're kind of driving down the road and looking at the mat navving. Oh, the guy saw, there it is. You know, you can't miss the car, even though it was very small. But uh, there's this cool car and a long line of people waiting there. So like, whoa, like, yeah, yeah. Look. No, so that's it, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So when did you start following Aptera and, and how did you hear about it? Um, I think it was about a year and a half, um, at least a year and a half, go a little more. Never heard anything about it, and then a real good buddy of mine who is known online is uh, Sparky J. Hi, I'm Jay from California, and I am all in on Aptera. Know him um, well. Yeah, I know him yeah, well. yeah. I think I think he's number five, thirty-five on the investor list. Anyway, we've been friends for forty years. We hang glided together and stuff. And um, he was just so excited about the car, um, and so he just kept talking about it. And the more we started hearing about it, we. Um, both my wife and I thought this is really interesting. My wife, particularly, um, we're both, um, I kind of like to coin, you know, dime store millionaires. We like to live a high lifestyle, but um, on, we're very frugal. <laughs> and, Let me know when you pull that off, how to do that, Bob. I'd like to try that myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, she particularly, I mean, she already is driving a Civic that probably gets, you know, close yeah. to 40 miles to the gallon. And, and when she heard it was, uh, you know, a plug in that also gets 40 miles a day on the sun, she just lit up. Um, and then me being a um, just Jay and I being hang glider pilots and I'm a sailor and I fly gliders. Um, I'm just very much aware of aerodynamics and, and how much uh, how much fuel you get robbed just by the design of any car. And so when he was telling me all about it, I went, oh, this is pretty interesting. However, it was, it was kind of a switch. You know, th this is the one where she, I think the next day, went online, plunked down her money, says, I, I want a I space in line. I have to get one right away. And um, so I've been, you know, I've been following her. And my house is the opposite. I discovered it, got excited about it. And then to get Sarah to look at it, it's like, come on, just just come watch this video with me. And then after a while, we're on an airplane to California together. So I, I didn't know that a wife could catch on to this first. So this is revolutionary in the Aptera community, Bob. Tell, oh, tell, yeah, your wife, yeah. tell your wife, Debbie, she's leading the march. Oh, she's leading she, the way. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great deal. <laughs> did, did it live up to the hype of what you'd seen videos on and seen pictures? And I know you talked to Jay about it a lot. But when you actually saw it, did it, did it live up to what you'd seen on the screen? Yeah, for me, yeah. Uh, I, 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 the aesthetics, I love. Um, and, and, and again, I love the aesthetics that everything's just clean. And um, I go back again to um, I, I, I fly gliders and um, those, uh, I mean, they're even like if you get bugs on the wings, uh, it, it kind of slows that is, you don't get as good of a glide. So just seeing the way it was designed, I go, oh, this makes perfect sense. You know, that you're not you're not carrying around or pushing extra air that you need to. Um, and I like the aesthetics. Uh, I just thought the other thing that was interesting while we were waiting in line and stuff is um, they had the, the ropes around the car, but it's parked on the curb. And right. so there's regular traffic and traffic was constantly stopped. And car oh, wow. cars are just stopped right in the middle of the road. They're getting their phones out and they're taking pictures. Oh, come on, man. What is that? You know, I mean, it was Oh, it was wow. it was like somebody had just seen a spaceship or something from the future. It was very I, cool. I hope you and Debbie are not introverts because you're going to get a lot of attention <laughs> when you're in this vehicle. Um, you know what? You'll know that both of us, that's never been a problem. Not an issue. <laughs> Is there a favorite Aptera um, 
is there a favorite part of it? Like some people are, are all in on solar. I know you're an aerodynamics person. I'm guessing that's going to be your thing. I don't know yet. The camping package is the deal for a lot of people. They'll be able to go off grid. What is your number one thing? And maybe if you know what Debbie's is, I'd love to know that too. Yeah. Well, Debbie's 100% when she saw 40 miles on solar, because um, we love to take long, long trips, so that's great. But just the idea, um, again, she's she's worked hard all her life, and she just says, the, well, as soon as she heard the idea, I never have to go to a gas station again, in theory. Wow. That's cool. You know, or, or even plug it in very often if you're just getting around town. That just that just lit her up. You could just immediately just see her mind turning of this thing's paid off and it's free. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. Uh, and and when she yeah, like like anybody that's into Apteras, um, you know, anybody she meets sometimes just in a grocery line. Here, look at this on my phone. Free energy, forty miles on it. <laughs> so, so that's the thing that she loves about it. Um, when we saw the car itself, though, I I like the you know I like the Jetsons look. I like that yeah. sporty look. Yeah, me too. Now, one thing that, and, and this might have even been before you were interested in it, but when this thing first, when the last prototype came out. I guess it was uh, 2019 or 20, right in there, the Alpha prototype. People were saying, oh, it's impossible to get in and out of this thing. And they would actually put out a video and say, it takes 10 or 15 steps. You got to do this and then this and then this. <laughs> and then when my wife and I got to visit the, um, the factory for the, the preview of the Gamma, which is the latest prototype that's uh -huh. available. And I just jumped in it without even thinking about it. And I thought, all that stuff. Well, so here I get to talk to somebody's firsthand experience. What did you find just getting in and out of it? Was it impossible to get in and out of it? Was it harder than other vehicles, Bob? What's the deal? Well, two things. First, uh, I was following my wife. And, okay. you know, for her, it was just like, you know, and, and she, felt. she's like, I, I'm, I'm guessing um, she's like maybe 5'4". So she's not real tall or anything like that. Um, and for me, uh, the other thing very specific is um, I'm a paraplegic, so I use a wheelchair. And um, a big thing for us was uh, if the if the door jam was too high, it was going to be hard for me to transfer over into the seat. And then the other thing is how hard is it going to get be to get my my um, my manual, you know, no batteries, wheelchair in and out. Uh, mm -hmm. Transferring from the wheelchair to the to the driver's seat was just no problem. It's wow. right at the driver's seat is right at at uh, wheelchair height, just a little bit lower. And okay. um, so then the first thing, you know, I, I, the only thing that was a drag, we were so excited about it and there was people waiting in line. And so we took a few extra moments to do this. Uh, first, I, I transferred in and went, hey, this is great. No problem. You know, this is great. Um, although it will be it'll be nice if they get like a little thing to, you know, kind of over the door jam to grab on to which from what I understand, they're going to have like a little grab handle like you find on most cars. Right, um, right, right there. I was able to do that no problem without it. It'll make it even easier for me. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, so the first thing is I transferred over. And when we drive together, she'll just take my chair. I, I have an old Subaru wagon. She'll just take my chair and throw it in the back. Okay. So that was the first thing. OK, does the chair fit in there? Um, pop the wheels off and put the chair in the back. If somebody had a folding chair, that would fit right in there as well. Took a quick picture because we also wanted to make sure that there's room for the Australian Shepherd to ride on the other side behind the That's back. That's important. Seat. That's important. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was no problem. And then we brought the chair back. And the next thing I wanted to know is, um, all right, she's going to get the first one when I want to drive it. And <laughs> you know, um, can I get the chair in and out myself, which that's how I normally, you know, on my Subaru. So I took the, the both wheels off, put each one behind the, the seat and then um, got video of me just taking the chair and putting it in the in the dry passenger seat. Again, that that was no problem. No problem. Oh, wow. at all. Yeah. How, how does that differ with your daily experience with other cars? I'm guessing you're talking about the height of things. So like an SUV would be a, a difficult task for you. Oh, obviously. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can get into SUVs, no problem. But uh, I'm, I'm 64. So, you know, used to a lot easier to get into them 10 years yeah. ago than they are now. Well, we don't um, look a so, day older than 63 and a half, Bob. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it, anything... Uh, anything 
you know, other than just a standard sedan for me these days, you know, I'm, I'm doing some extra effort. And uh, so this, just because it's very wide open, um, right. in my, you know, my experience, it was, it was easy to get in and out of. And yes. um, that, that large door area, if anything, it made it easier to get the chair in and out of because there was, there's even an area where there's kind of a larger area where there's no roof where you can kind of maneuver the chair when you finally, it's when I finally get it over my lap that I have more, it's kind of right in my power center to get it to the okay. other side of the car. So Bob, now that you've had the chance to get in it, get your wheelchair in it, see how your wheelchair fits in the back. I can't help but think what if it was so low or too high and it was a real hard time, what would that do? Would you still be able to use this vehicle? Well, um, first of all, Debbie would have been crushed because oh. we discussed it and that would have been a deal breaker. Oh. Um, uh, even though it was her vehicle, if, uh, you know, we, we love road tripping together, we love traveling together. And if I couldn't get in and out of the vehicle easily, um, you know, especially as I age, my shoulders are getting, they're getting pretty tired. So mm. I couldn't get in and out really easily and it wasn't really easy to get the, the wheelchair in. We'd already discussed, well, she, she's going to be driving her Civic for another couple hundred thousand miles. Wow. Um, so, well, I'm so uh, grateful it didn't go that way. Two things. A, she was even more excited. And I think there was that, like, oh, that, that sigh of relief for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think about a year and a half ago, they made a little video where they're showing all the things you can fit in that back part. You know, yeah. surfboards, guitar amps, drums, dogs, all this. And but people like me and you, because my kid brother Adam, he's been in a wheelchair for 40 plus years now. When we look at a car, we're wondering, is there enough room in the back for the wheelchair plus a suitcase? And so this is a perspective I don't think I've ever seen before is yours, Bob. We really appreciate yeah. you sharing this and, with and, us. And again, that was a big thing too, because um, the magazine that I write for, um, it's a um, it's a national magazine for wheelchair users. Now that's a massive wide audience for a yeah. lot of different reasons. Um, but I, if, uh, if I was helping somebody, if I was, you know, walking and helping somebody that was a wheelchair user, that, that big wide door, uh, is my survey of one, as I like to say, uh, it, it does give you plenty of room to be able mm -hmm. to get in there and stuff. Some, I mean, the worst is smaller doors where, you know, you gotta, you, the, somebody that's helping you, they're twisting their back, trying to get yeah. you in. Or if it's a smaller door, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to wedge my myself in or, again, smaller door, then it's, it's less space to get the wheelchair in and out. Are you going to get the camping package so you could just camp in oh, the back of this? 100%. Thing? Yeah. yeah I, she, Debbie's already got, she, she knows, three-wheel drive for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, absolutely the camping package. And then... Um, uh, she, her dream is the um, the thousand mile package, but uh, depending on time, um, it's uh, if that's not available when hers is available, then uh, there'll be a, a switch down the road. Hmm. I look forward to seeing an article eventually in New Mobility at newmobility.com, oh, yeah. everybody, where we can see a comparison of modern EVs and what it means to folks that are in wheelchairs. You know, getting in and out as a comparison, Chevy Equinox, Aptera. Ford, uh, that'd be an interesting, I think, an article. You know, I would read it. Oh, yeah. No, I, I it, it's it. a big deal. It, it's yeah. a big deal. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, not everybody in a wheelchair drives a, a ramp van or anything like right. that. I mean, I I prefer, uh, a, you know, a sporty type car that I that I can afford. Um, yeah. So, uh, and, and you know, another kind of interesting thing for me is that, um, as we were talking about earlier, the um, the whole concept of two front wheels, uh, you know the the two wheels in front and the one wheel in the back. Yeah. Um. I I have a, a an adaptive um, off road mountain bike, a hand pedal mountain bike that's uh, that's an e bike, and I've been riding that and off roading and and racing it since two thousand. So I'm very familiar with the even on a small version, just with the handling characteristics and the high speed cornering of, of a three wheeler. And uh, when I first got that, I was like. I don't know. <laughs> and again, the engineer says, no, no, you know, it's, you got the two wheels in the front that you got a totally different stability kind of thing. And um, man, I've, I've cornered that really hard. Uh, and the other thing, now this is on a, on a very small bike kind of thing, oh. but um, I find that, uh, you know, 
any you could tip over anything i mean look at the highway crashes yeah. um and on a three-wheeler i find if you corner it way 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 too hard where it's gonna go it kind of it kind of will let you know a little bit you'll feel a wheel get a little bit light it'll say hey ease up slow down <laughs> yeah. it's not like i'm upside down kind of thing so good that's good to I, hear. You know, I, a don't do it you know don't ever get that fast but b um i it was having so many miles on that it immediately made sense to me like yeah that that configuration 100 percent works wow that's great that's good to hear again a perspective that not many of us have thank you so much bob i appreciate the time you took with us today it's been a real i hope you don't mind if we catch up again sometime i look forward to it as we move down the road good yeah yeah hopefully uh when we're when we either get the test drive one or or uh you know when we got our camping set up (laughs) yeah that'd be great so go to newmobility.com and you can check out where bob writes and uh, you can see how they really help people in wheelchair to get the most out of life in fact bob the things you've talked about today you're 10 times more active than i am Um, i I can't you're, you're racing bikes you're hang gliding. You know what I'm doing? I'm I'm driving around making sales calls all day, complaining yeah, that I don't have enough time for exercise. So I, I figure, you know, life's short. I'm trying to jam everything I can into this one time. <laughs> well, I appreciate your example. It's great meeting you, Bob. Thank you so much. And say hi to Debbie right. for us. I sure will. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you so much to the members of the channel. You keep the wheels churning on the Positively Charged EV channel and the Mug Club members. You mugs, my mugs, so Sarah and I can get back to California for some coverage very soon as Aptera begins to roll the production and tent vehicles down the road. Thank you. Here's another video you might want to watch right here. A little bit more information about the solar-powered electric car of the future.